Okay, so I was in the process of soft, soft refining my edges in the foreground here. And so it's really only on these two layers. I'll del turn off the, uh, the rest so you can see them, that I've been soft erasing. And it's very, very common to, to make mistakes, to leave little traces. We're not trying to be perfect yet. Because this isn't our final end of the semester portfolio piece, right? We're just learning these skills. But what is important is as you're erasing, you want to be aware what layers you are affecting, right? Because notice, if I'm erasing, I can't affect a layer that's not selected. And that's where most mistakes happen in beginning compositing. It's trying to delete from a layer that's not selected and accidentally accidentally deleting from a layer that isn't selected because that can happen right so if you want to be safe you can use the padlocks you know as you go to keep you from accidentally erasing on the wrong layers bless you a lot of sneezing today take care of yourself guys vitamin c all right so what is so beautifully convenient about having assets from, from photo P that are already cut out as PNGs is I don't need to do any of that cutting out. And man-made stuff tends to need a little bit of a crisper edge than organic stuff, right? But it also shows me that I don't need any of this plant here. And if I use my stylus, right, and my tablet, I can get in between these areas pretty nicely. The mistake you don't want to make, which will happen and you'll learn from it, but you don't want to accidentally erase into the thing you're trying to composite with. Because then you lose the information, you have to work hard to get it back. Okay, so next. Working on back to the next reference. I'm going to make my lasso even a little bit bigger. And you can, or not my lasso, my eraser a little bit bigger. Sorry, hardness zero, size bigger. Because I just want to get rid of these hard edges that are showing where I cut it out. Right. And then when it overlaps, I have more control of it. So I'm just getting rid of the hard edges, finishing up, but not, but not removing any pixels, I hope, from the source material that I want to keep. And actually, this little tree, like parts of this could be pretty helpful, so I'm going to keep that to transition between the ruins. And then this guy... Same thing. I just want to get rid of these hard edges. Just let it be 100% soft, but also 100% opaque with your eraser. So you're not leaving any trace of a hard image behind. Because if I do the same thing with a low opacity eraser, no matter how much I erase, there will always be a little ghost of a hard edge. So that's why 100% soft edged eraser to start. And you'll notice it starts to blend almost right away. So when the colors and the values are similar, this background and this ruin kind of feel like they're already in similar lighting. They're almost matching pretty well. It's because they already have a lot of atmosphere. Okay, so next. Those are all softly cut out. Okay, so now I'm going to save my work, Command S. It's already named. I know it's on the, the desktop. It's right there. 
Now I don't need as much empty space. So I'm going to save myself some memory by using the crop tool again and just cropping it to the edges. Maybe like this. Not cropping it too tight because maybe I want to grow my composition a little bit. Or maybe I want to take an asset like this and move it over. These are all options that are, are nice to use, right? Okay, next step, I've rough cut everything out and I've softened the hard edges. I don't really need my sketch anymore, but it's there. But notice how everything is, is mapping pretty well to my plans. Okay, the next step is adjusting the colors. So and the lighting. So it's best to do this from the background on forward. So I know I like this in terms of its lighting, but I don't like how cheesy it looks. So I'm layering this on top of it. And right now that's at 100% opacity. I can try taking it down a little bit in opacity. And I kind of like how that looks, except it doesn't really make sense to have these really faint palm trees. So I need to make it a little bit stronger, maybe something like that. By layering these two on top of each other, I am adjusting the colors and the lighting, but in a very limited range. So what if I want this to be a little bit more colorful? So I have it at 100% to make it look a little bit more like this. I'm going to use direct adjustments. So I go to image, the same place you have image size and canvas size, but I go to adjustments and the first thing I do is levels. We've used levels before. Levels is lights and darks, brightness, contrast, basically. You'll see that this image has, ah, golly, get rid of this, <laughs> has no highlights at all. It starts at 50% gray and then just gets darker. But if I move that middle slider, I can make it brighter. I can also limit it and make it darker. And I can move the highlight slider and kind of push it into that realm. So that's lights and darks. What's nice about that is it gives me a little bit more nuance between these. It widens the histogram. The histogram is that, that arc that you see in levels. The next thing, I want to give it more color. So I'm going to go to color balance, which is my favorite of the direct adjustments and I'm gonna play with it there. And I can push it one way or the other. And then the next thing, this is the last adjustment I wanna show you, is image adjustment hue saturation. And this is where I can make really big shifts in color and in the intensity of the color. So if I wanted a red sky, I could get that. So, it started, I'll show you in your history, and then I'll stop this video, before I did these three levels, and I always do them in this order, it looked like this. I went to image adjustments, levels, and I played with the sliders, and it did that. Brightened it up quite a bit. Then I went to levels adjustments, or image adjustments, color balance, and I played with those sliders, and it got to here. Then I went to image adjustments, hue saturation, played with those sliders and got to here, right? So I can go back any step I want, but I think that's a good place. Now you see how these two are more similar. So if I blend them, that might work better. Or if I erase out from one into the other, you know, this is kind of what I want. Now let's try those same adjustment levels with this. So image adjustment levels, brightness, shadows, highlights. I can make it show up a little bit, a little bit darker shadows. That's just lights and darks. Now color balance, this will make a big shift. I can shift it more towards the magentas and reds. I can play with the highlights, make those a little bit warmer. Play with the shadows, make those a little bit cooler and greener. 
So, last one, hue saturation, and that will be it. And play with the overall hue, push it back and forth, see what kind of fits. Play with the intensity of the color. And then what did it look like before I did any of that? Looked like this. Going through the image adjustments, it gets more and more to what I want. Then I move on to the next thing. So th those are, if you use those direct adjustments on all your layers before you do the rough cutouts, for instance, I can use the levels adjustments to get rid of this bright white. I can limit the whites. It will make it a lot easier to sync everything together. And it will all be more believable. So, always in that order, levels, color balance, hue saturation, found under image adjustments. And that's a good place.